Hi everybody, we're out here today at San Bernardino County Sheriff's Aviation Facility to talk about our West Valley Search and Rescue Team. This is an amazing group of men and women who volunteer their time as everyday heroes in our community to help their fellow citizen who might be lost in the wilderness to provide emergency support and rescue. We're gonna look at some of their equipment today and talk to both the Sheriff's Emergency Coordinator and our amazing volunteer, Tom Henderson, who's been doing this for more than 15 years in San Bernardino County. Tell me how you came to the Search and Rescue Volunteers. Well, I was just looking for um, a way to participate and do something uh, meaningful in the community. And um, this was right after 9-11. Yeah. And um, I, I, it just seemed to really click for me to, to join the Search and Rescue team and get out there and help people get off the mountain safely. How many members are there on the West Valley Search and Rescue team? I think we're about uh, 47 members now. And tell me about their day jobs, because they don't do this full time. Right, yeah, we've got a, a, a wide variety of folks on our team, um, auto mechanics, uh, lawyer, doctor, school teachers, small business owners, it really runs the whole spectrum. And how many hours does a typical volunteer give to the team? I'd say uh, we probably average about 60, but some members are are quite a bit more than that, up 60 to a 60 year? hours a, a month. month. A yes. month. Right. All right. right. So let's talk about some of the things you do. We know you cover areas from Mount Baldy all the way out to the Cajon Pass, or do you go farther east? Um, that's our primary territory. We also have Lytle Creek on the other side of the mountain, um, but we're also assisting other teams that uh, from our own county that call for assistance and even throughout the state of California. But most of your work is probably in the Mount Baldy, Cucamonga Peak area. Yeah, the vast majority of our missions right. are out there. And way. off to Lytle Creek. So right. tell us about a typical one. What what trouble has somebody gotten into that necessitates a call to the team? Uh, well, it's usually folks that are out there and maybe they're prepared, maybe they're not. And um, perhaps they encounter some weather or they just lose sight of the trail. Um, so either a family member will call in or they might get lucky enough to get self-service. This is mom. I'm just so worried, sick about you. Where are you? Um, the rescue teams, the hikers, are looking for you right now, but it'll take a couple of hours before they get to you. Uh, I hope you get this message. If not, I hope you get a text message for me. Like, could you text me back? Just let me know that you're okay. Um, apparently, they used the PA system. They went looking for you. They were in a helicopter. Uh, with all the light, they saw you, they did the PA system, but apparently you were incoherent. So if you're okay, can you text me back? Um, because I am worried sick. This is mom. I love you. Hi, Tony, it's Sophie. Um, I just, uh, Emily got an Instagram message from one of your friends and she said that your emergency responder went off or something. And I just wanted to make sure everything was all right. Um, give me a call when you get this, okay? Bye. Uh, call 911, that activates our team. And um, based on some preliminary information, we try to figure out where they are and send teams in all directions to try to converge and, and find them, bring them back. Uh, sometimes we're fortunate enough that they're not injured, they just need guidance out. Sometimes they are injured, so we've got to do some medical and, and uh, carry them off the mountain. So of those almost 50 volunteers on the team, how many will go out on a typical incident? <clears throat> uh, I would say we get between 12 and 20 or so on a typical mission. Kind of depends a little bit on the time of day and the day of the week, um, because they all have regular jobs and other you know, family obligations, but, uh, but that's pretty typical. If someone is looking to head out into our wilderness, they think they're just going out for a nice little day hike, <laughs> what are some items you would tell them that you they have to have with them to be prepared? Uh, we have a list, actually. Um, it's kind of called the 10 essentials, but there's actually 11 items on the list. Um, you know, it's everything from extra clothing and water and some sort of light source, maps, compass. Um, and uh, they can actually check out our website, and it's got a full list of all those items on it. And fortunately, we're, we're blessed to have people like Tom and his team who go out and help them and bring them back to safety. And in doing so, they not only save lives, but they save taxpayers and help us with the mission of the Sheriff's Department. So I'm grateful for volunteers like Tom and his team. Thank you so much for joining me to talk about it today. Thanks so much. Thanks. Thanks. We're here now with Frank Cams. He is the Emergency Services Coordinator for the San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department. That means that he gets to work with all of our volunteers who make up the search and rescue teams in the county. Tell me a little bit about the job. Well, the job entails, as you mentioned, working with the volunteers. 
uh, on large searches volunteer forces unit supports the station or the mission. So we'll roll out uh, equipment that they may need. Um, the SAR coordinator will be in touch with the state if mutual aid resources are required, which means additional search and rescue personnel. So I work in the background with that. My job also entails working with uh, sister agencies, county fire, Department of Health, Public Works, in coordinating emergency plans and actions in the event of a disaster. So in terms of the emergency rescues that we have to do for hikers who've become lost or uh, skiers who leave the trails, those sorts of things, uh, you call out our emergency volunteers and set up the search scene and bring in the support systems that they need or coordinate with agencies from outside the county who might be called in to help too? Correct. When a, a, a station uh, has a search and it's growing beyond their means, they will call our, the SAR coordinator, volunteer forces. The SAR coordinator will put out a page to the rest of the volunteers in the county and we will muster the forces required to accomplish that mission. Along with that, we will bring out a command post or two uh, whatever other assets that the station requires. You coordinate with the aviation unit to bring out the air support as well? Absolutely. A uh, aviation is generally on scene. Um, when the call comes out, the 911 call, they're notified, the station will notify, request their services, and generally 40 King unit will be out doing a search. If there has to be a hoist, then uh, one of the three, uh, the Hueys will come on board and perform the hoist as required. Do we have equestrian units that sometimes help out? We actually do. We have several posse teams spread throughout the county and they are very valuable when it comes to assisting on searches. They have a view that the average uh, searcher does not have. Um, they can cover a vast amount of ground rather quickly. Uh, they're a great asset to the department. How many volunteers do we have in San Bernardino County? Right currently we have about 512 search and rescue volunteers. How many of those are with the West End Search and Rescue? Uh, the West Valley Search and Rescue, there's approximately 47 at this point in time. Volunteer Forces also oversees over 2,000 volunteers for the department. Wow. Now, 47 rescuers who volunteer on the West End, 500-some yes. all in the county, that's a lot of hours that they put in helping our professional deputies and support services. Absolutely. I'm sure you run some math and figure out the value of those volunteers. How much money do our volunteers save county taxpayers by donating their time? The volunteers of San Bernardino County save the county taxpayers roughly $10 million a year. That's fantastic. Well, on behalf of the taxpayers, I thank you for that, but also for the great service. What if someone wants to join the volunteer forces? What should they do? If they, if, if a citizen wants to join, volunteer, wants to become a volunteer for the department, they can go to the volunteer forces website. A lot of teams also have websites, and all they have to do is uh, fill out an application, and then the process gets started. What sort of experience are you looking for? Really, experience, what we're really looking for is a good attitude, a willingness to learn, and a willingness to be available and go out and help that poor citizen who's in trouble.